hello everyone so today we are going to uh, create two types of enemies so one is the red guy uh, I, I will be able to mark the free roam radius for this guy so we can always make sure when the NPC is free roaming he will be always in an area within a given radius from the starting location so we can prevent like ending up one of the NPCs may be over there by defining the radius he can free roam and also another type is uh, guards the yellow guy so he don't free roam he will stay stationary like a guard who is like guarding a gate or something uh, so they don't free roam they just stay in the same location but still if they hear a sound or if we see an enemy they will uh, run into combat or search the areas but always he will return to original location and start guarding that post so this is what I'm going to work on today and while doing this this I will set up the necessary architecture to allow have all different types of enemies such as patrol enemies in the future as well here is the demonstration I'll go crouching because if they hear me they will start searching the area around so the yellow guy stays here and red guy is free roaming if i walk yeah now they heard me so uh, but the red guy didn't hurt me because he was far away uh, to hear the footstep sound this guy is coming here and now he saw me and he's going to shoot me okay so if i ran away and i break the line of sight he will return uh, but that's happens so this is the demonstration let's see how to do this today okay so at the moment uh, this npc character uh, it doesn't have any like distinguished uh, predefined path or anything at least not even a range that he can do the free roam and just it's just randomly free roam so what I'm gonna do is create in a way uh, defining an area that he can actually free roam so he wouldn't end up maybe somewhere over there after a while so also it will uh, make easier for me to test the game as well because uh, since the character can go anywhere it is really hard for me to test uh, footsteps etc so right how to do that and also those data like the free roaming radius or anything it would be better if I can just uh, modify this in when I select the blueprint instance here rather than change them for only the default values through the AI controller so to allow such specific uh, things for NPC characters that are not common for the player or any other character I create a child class ALS NPC to make it easier for me to identify I'll make them red right now uh, here I'll add a new variable free room radius this should be a float and I'll put one of these NPC characters here in place of the animan character I had before and also by default this one has the ALS AI controller so I don't have to make any changes there by default I'll make this um, thousand and also 
I'll put this under a category here. I don't think I already have a category. No, okay. I'll make this visible. So now here, if I want, I can change the free ROM radius. Now let me open the behavior tree. So here, basically, what happens is when the character is free roaming this uh, bt task get random location mm, no, get random location right so i'll create a new task instead of calling random location i'll call it uh, something like get next location new task and uh, blueprint base you will receive execute AI and from the phone uh, so from the phone I should be able to get the next location so that I would be able to create child classes and make modifications as necessary so how can we do that first uh what are the inherited interfaces say let's character bpi okay let's define a new interface for ai specific tasks Mm, ah, I already have CLM BPI AI, but uh, I define this in the AI controller. Right, so what? Maybe to make it more clear, I'll call it a controller. And add a new one. Blueprints. Blueprint interface CLM BPI and PC. Right. Get next location. This should simply return a location. Right now, let's implement this in the ls and vc ls sorry b uh, clm bpi and vc right now get next location yeah. and I get next location so here what I'm gonna do is just like we are doing it here from the location of the character we get random reachable point oh maybe not we can um, let's uh, oh we need the initial location here as well um, therefore This is NPC, right? I'll add another variable. Actually, we have initial location in the blackboard itself. So this may be somewhat redundant, but for now, let's add it. This should also come under AI category. Initial location. And let's initialize this in the begin player. Set with get actor location. So all we should do is 
returning some location within this free roam radius around the initial location get random reachable point in radius as the radius I'll use free roam radius and return that right now i created did i create a new task ah this one pt task blueprint base so i'll rename this pt task get next location Now from the control pawn we can get next location and uh, here we need to set the move to location so add a variable move to location this should be uh, Blackboard key selector. Okay, public set value as vector. Set the location and finish execute with the success. Uh, I'll set the name, the node name to get next location. Right now, here in the behavior tree, instead of this get random location for the free roaming, I'll use get next location. Right. Now I have set thousand as the free roam radius, so this character will not go beyond that range from the initial location. So we can eliminate the possibility of ending up that character somewhere over there. So I will stick in this area within thousand radius from the initial location right okay so now what if we need to keep the character like completely stationary like some guard in uh, in exact position so I can simply make the same uh, free roam radius zero, but that will make this branch uh, get called over and over again unnecessarily, which is something I want to avoid. So instead of free roaming, uh, maybe I'll call this duty. The reason to call it duty is later on I will have patrolling enemies or so stationary enemies or so free roaming enemies. So whatever they are doing when they are not in a fight, I'm gonna call it duty. Their usual duty. So here I'll add a new boolean. Duty enabled. Uh, yeah, but I'll make can I make uh, value here uh, no not yet maybe we don't need this yet so anyway but I still need a way to determine if the character does not have I have a, like a zero free roam radius I should not call this again and again uh, this is somewhat confusing I think I need 
the duty key. Yeah. Duty key number. So if they are stationary, I'm gonna call them. I'm gonna assume that they don't have any duty, so they should stay in one position. Okay. So here. I'll add a new variable. Duty enabled. That also should come on the AI. And it should be a boolean. By default, it should be true. And in the AI controller, let's define a new decorator based on the uh, PT decorator blueprint base right so there should be an example so I'll call this one PT decorator duty enabled oh well actually this should be uh, more like a question is duty enabled is duty so a decorator let me show you an example decorator oh we don't have a pretty decorator but i can open one here for example let's check this check pool all right this is how it works where is it oh, this is something i did before okay so we can get a key and perform condition check care this is the function we need to use for a decorator pt decorator so Here and override we have perform condition check. This should work. Now, if we set up an interface method uh, to check get uh, get the value of due to enabled, we can use it. So what we can do is under ALS VPN PC. I add a function get duty is duty enabled. Oh, we can actually use the same name, and as the output, we need a boolean. Duty enabled. Right now. We can implement it in the NPC. You can simply return the value of duty and Albert. So if this is true, now within this here. Is duty enabled? And we can return that value through this service. Right. Now we can use this uh, this uh, decorator here. Not this one. A decorator. Wait, and this one is duty enabled. Let me change the name. Duty enabled. So if this is true, whatever here should take place.
and if this becomes changed at any time I this about self but as for the moment it's not likely to change the value of duty enabled in the runtime so now by default this guy I have enabled duty for this guy so he should be doing free roaming see he does but uh, let me have another character here and if I disable free roaming for this guy one must go other one must stay Uh, but if I make a noise, let me make a noise. So that guy, uh, both guys heard me, so they should come and check. But the one problem here I have is the guy that I haven't enabled duty will not return to the original position oh are they ah uh, yeah I think they are because I have enabled this move to initial location here Right, so that's what happening. Okay, so they are returning to the initial location. Cool. So okay, so now I have two types of enemies. Uh, one type who can, who are just free roaming around the initial location, and other type who is uh, just staying stationary like guards. So in the next time, I'm gonna implement. An NPC character which can uh, who can follow a specific patrol path and I'm gonna stop this episode right and thanks for watching so as always project files will be available for the download in the patron page link would be in the description below and if you like to support my work you can get the membership of the patron club see you in another episode goodbye